we found a good combination of a dyno that was good for 1,200 horsepower. And, and as it turns out, this cell has been used for a lot of the GTSR work. It's been used for a lot of the NASCAR work. It's been used for you know, all of the Viper work since about 1996. And uh, this is kind of the rebirth of cell 13. We knew there were some areas of the engine that we could certainly improve on, the intake manifold being one of them. We did a lot of CFD, we did a lot of just good old fashioned flow development on the intake and we were able to really improve the airflow in the intake. The other thing we knew that we could do, we, we could be a little more aggressive on the camshaft, so we, we added a little bit of duration to the intake cam. We left the exhaust cam alone because uh, that is a little more easily uh, manipulated with the VVT. So by adding the intake duration, it was, we, we were able to increase the peaking speed of the engine a little bit and get a little more top end power. Other things we did, we went to a sodium filled exhaust valve. Um, that allowed us to be more aggressive in our calibration with spark and fuel. Uh, we went to a forged piston, same reason. It was able to withstand higher pressures and temperatures. So we could again lean out the mixture, be a little more aggressive with the spark and not compromise durability. So all of these things put together, we, we were able to squeeze out about another 40 horsepower. The Gen 5, we made some significant changes to the cooling system. Uh, not so much the pump, but we did a lot of computer model work on the, the block, the cylinder head, the coolant system in general. Again, it's, it's a long engine. It's not easy to cool from front to back. You get a lot of water flow in this engine, but you don't always get it where you want it to be. So we did a lot of work there, uh, changed the head gaskets, the holes between the head gaskets, uh, between the block and the cylinder head, um, and we were able to uh, make some changes to the block itself, some of the cores. And as a result, we were able to do a great job of balancing the temperature front to rear on the engine. Um, another change we made is uh, we, we've switched over to the Pennzoil Ultra Motor Oil. Uh, Shell came in and was very proactive with us uh, trying to develop oils for this engine. So they came up with a 0W40 Ultra blend. Uh, it's very high in uh, molybdenum. Uh, it's, it's a very good friction inhibitor. And it's also got a very high detergent content. Trying to get weight out of the engine as much as possible. And one of my pet peeves was always the flywheel and clutch because, man, those things are heavy. In the ACRX, for example, we had gone to an aluminum flywheel and had very good luck with it. So uh, we decided to, to take the plunge, and uh, when we got some prototype parts in, we did some testing on it. And to the surprise of the driveline guys, it actually fared better than the old steel flywheel in some of their durability testing. So there's a, there's a part right there where we saved about 11 pounds off the back of the engine, and it's 11 pounds of rotating weight at engine speed, so that's a huge improvement. And this, this part being a, a tube and shell type manifold, uh, it does a really great job of not only keeping heat out of the car, much better than the past, but it keeps the heat in to heat up the catalyst. Changing the wash coat process, we were able to go to a single pass wash coat instead of a two pass, and it allowed us to reduce the back pressure through the catalyst by about three inches of back pressure. So that's pretty significant. That was worth, you know, six or seven horsepower by itself. There was a story once, what was it, where uh, it was the, uh, the SR-71 Blackbird. You know, there was a story once that, you know, they'd send that, that plane went out the first time and it set a record for the, the fastest airspeed ever. And the Soviets or somebody else would go out and they'd break the record. So what would they do? Well, they'd drag the SR-71 back out of the hangar, send it up again, and break the record. You know, and just it was kind of like, how fast would that plane really go? You know, how fast did you want it to go? Nobody seemed to really know. You know, but if you wanted it to go faster, you'd just go up there and push it a little harder, and it would go faster. And this car is kind of that way. You know, I mean, we went to to Nurburgring when we lost our record, and we pushed it a little far faster, and what happened? I mean, we killed the record. And, and we still felt like there's still time left on the table. If we had to go back and run a little faster time, I think we could. So this, this car, this engine, it's kind of like the SR-71, you know? It just, it never disappoints you. So that's, that's pretty cool.